You're not afraid of the dark, are you? Don't be afraid. Come with me. From the house on the hill, filled with thrills and chills. Turn off the lights and light a candle. Pull up a seat, if you will. You are listening to Lights Out Radio. According to studies and research, there are approximately 25 to 50 active serial killers operating in the United States today. The average person unknowingly walks by about 15 murderers in their lifetime. You are now tuned in to Serial Killer Saturday. And welcome back everybody to another episode of Lights Out Radio with Justin, your host. Now this is an SKS edition, another Serial Killer Saturday, so I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for stepping in, stepping by, saying hi. So let's just go ahead and get on with the show. So I'm going to start out with a little breaking news story and then kind of lead into a little short commentary and then we'll get on with the show, okay? So Jan Harzan was arrested July 3rd and is accused of soliciting sexual activity from a detective he believed was a 13-year-old girl. Now, if you don't know who Jan Harzan is, let me break it down for you real quick. So he's the executive was... Sorry, was. <laughs> he was the executive director of the Mutual UFO Network, a.k.a. MUFON. Now, if you don't know what MUFON is, let me break that one down for you real quick, too. So the MUFON organization was founded in 1969 in Quincy, Illinois, to track citizen sightings of UFOs, right? And they still claim to hold the world's largest and most detailed database of UFO sightings. Now, these guys aren't something that the average person would picture, right? They're not some... 40, 50-year-old guy chilling in dirty underwear and old t-shirts in his mama's basement, right? So these are actually, they've done a lot of work with government contractors. Probably most notably Bigelow Aerospace, which, as you know, is owned by Robert Bigelow, the guy that bought Skinwalker Ranch for a couple years and worked with the government on uh, the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program that ended in 2012. But anyway, so Bigelow Aerospace paid MUFON to make technical reports on characteristics often described in UFO incidents. They also offered MUFON funding to put together the STAR team, a UFO investigation team that could be on site within 24 to 48 hours of a UFO incident. So anyway, yeah, that's what all that's about. But court records show that Harzan was arrested on charges of, quote, communicating with a minor with intent to engage in a lewd act, as well as, quote, arranging a meeting to engage in a lewd act with a minor in public. Now, Huntington Beach PD are the one that arrested him, and on their Facebook post they put, quote, On July 3rd, detectives contacted a male by the name of Jan Harzan. After Harzan solicited sexual activity from a detective he believed was a 13-year-old girl, the suspect solicited the minor to meet for the purpose of engaging in sexual activity and when the suspect agreed to meet the supposed minor, detectives were there to take him into custody. They said he was arrested for multiple felonies and transported to the Huntington Beach Jail and was specifically targeting minor females online. Now that's from the uh, Huntington Beach PD Facebook post, right? Now I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Looking at dude's picture, I've never seen his picture before this shit came out, but looking at dude's picture, he looks like a creepy, pedophile-ass politician. That's what he looks like to me. And I can't stand those type of people, no way, in general. But, like, this is disgusting, yo. And, like, oh my god, what is up with this crap nowadays? You gotta be a weak person. There's two things I hate in the world the most, right? A rapist and a child molester. Frickin' chomo, right? I can't stand neither one of them. Scum of the earth, worst of the worst, off with their head. Just get them done, get them over with, bye-bye, see you later. You know what I mean? Like, it's just disgusting to pick on the two weakest. You're picking on kids and you're picking on women. Wow, you're a big fucking tough guy, ain't you? It's just garbage to me. And I hope this guy gets lock socked right in his fucking jaw. Excuse all the excess effing right now, but I'm so tired of all this pedophilia, child molest. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Like, 
that dude that was accused of whatever hunting him down or whatever through Facebook and through other websites and stuff. Good on that, man. All right. Because I'm over all this crap. I'm done with it. I hope MUFON moves on because they actually are a really nice organization. They they do a lot of work. They really do. And I'm glad they cut ties with this nasty motherfucker here. So now that that's done and out of the way, thank you for letting me vent. I just needed to get that off my chest. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and move on. So when we come back, we're going to be getting into the story of Samuel Little, the United States of America's most prolific serial killer that most people have never even heard of. Stay tuned when we return. Welcome back, everybody, to Lights Out Radio. And now we're going to get into the story of Samuel Little. Now, before we start, I do want to touch base with something. For those of you that have or have not noticed, I don't put the victim's pictures in my stories. And for good reason. For one, I feel like it's kind of bad taste. For two, I just think it's wrong to kind of objectify the victim furthermore. You know what I mean? And for three, I just think it's it's just disrespectful. But for this episode, I am going to have to make an exception and break that rule simply because the way that this guy is confessing to these murders, he's making these confessions by drawing and painting the victims from memory. So the FBI, the cops, the Texas Rangers that have been interviewing him and stuff, they say that he does have a photogenic photographic memory and he has confessed to the murders of 93 women. Now, 50 of those, because of these drawings and paintings, have been verified. 50 of those have been verified because of these drawings and paintings. So, in this video, I am going to post some of the paintings and drawings simply because of how weird that is, that that's how these murders are being solved, and that's how this guy's body count rate is going up. And secondly, maybe somebody that hasn't been, maybe one of the victims that hasn't been solved yet, maybe this will help that one get solved. Maybe a family member, maybe somebody will see that painting and be like, hey, that looks like so-and-so, you know what I mean? So that's why I just wanted to throw a little disclaimer out there. So I'm just going to kind of rock it like that for this episode. Just want to let you know, but now let's get on with it. Samuel Little was born on June 7th, 1940 in Reynolds, Georgia, to a mother he claimed was a prostitute. Not long after he was born, they moved to Ohio, where he was brought up mainly by his grandmother. He went to Hawthorne Junior High, where he had problems with discipline and achievement. But in 1956, so he was like 16, after being convicted of breaking and entering into a property in Omaha, Nebraska, Little was held in an institution for juvenile offenders. And I guess, I haven't been able to find anything else, but I guess that's the end of his school career. So, I mean, Hawthorne Junior High, I guess that was it for him. And then in 1961, Little was sentenced to three years in prison for breaking into a furniture store in Ohio. He was released in 1964. So then he, late 20s, he moves down to Florida to live with his mother, at times working as a cemetery worker or an ambulance attendant, according to him. And then by 1975, he had been arrested 26 times in 11 states for crimes including theft, assault, attempted rape, fraud, attacks on government officials, armed robbery, solicitation, DUI, shoplifting. I mean, he was just a man gone wild, right? In 1982, Sam was arrested in Mississippi and charged with the murder of 22-year-old Melinda LaPree, who had gone missing in September of that year. Now, a grand jury declined to indict Little for the murder of LaPree. However, while under investigation... Little was transferred to Florida to be brought to trial for the murder of 26-year-old Patricia Mount, whose body was found in September 1982. Now, the prosecution witnesses identified Little in court as a person who spent time with Mount on the night before her disappearance. Due to the mistrust of the witness testimonies, Little was acquitted in January of 1984. So before we go any further, I just wanted to point out the fact that Sam said the reason he was able to fly under the radar for 40 years without getting busted is because he picked people that no one would miss. He didn't, he picked people no one would care about. If you look at his, at his victims list, most of them were either women he met in clubs or straight prostitutes. So if you have a prostitute point you out in a lineup, that's kind of hard. I mean, that's easy for a defense to be like, yo, she's a prostitute. She was probably high on crack at the time. How does she know what he looked like? You know what I mean? So that's why that kind of happens. 
Another story he tells, which, by the way, if you listen to him talk, there's plenty of YouTube videos of his interviews and stuff and his confessions. If you listen to his stories, he talks with such, he's so nonchalant. There's like no remorse. He's telling you these stories about killing these women like he's talking to you across a bonfire drinking a beer. You know what I mean? It's just so nonchalant and just so matter of fact kind of storytelling. But either way, so he's in North, uh, where was it? North Little Rock, Arkansas, right? He picks his chick up from the bar one night. They're riding around for a couple days, shoplifting, hanging out, doing their thing. He gets busted at a, at a Kroger, right? So they arrest him, and the chick is living in his car in the parking lot. So the manager of the Kroger calls the, uh, the police station where he's at and drops the charges. So he gets out. He goes back to his car, goes back to the girl in the car. They drive about 10 miles, he said, out of, outside of North Little Rock, Arkansas, and he strangles her and dumps her in a cornfield by a wood line. So there you go. There's another story. After he's acquitted in 84, uh, Sam moves to California where he stayed in the vicinity of San Diego. In October 1984, he was arrested for kidnapping, beating, and strangling 22-year-old Lori Barros, who survived. One month later, though, he was found by police in the backseat of his car with an unconscious woman, also beaten and strangled, in the same location that the attempted murder of Barros happened. Now, what a geez, man. How cra- That's crazy to me. Little served two and a half years in prison for both crimes. Upon his release in February 1987, he immediately moved to Los Angeles and committed 10 additional murders in Los Angeles alone. And then we're going to take a time machine and fast forward to September 5th, 2012, where Sam was arrested as a, at a homeless shelter in Louisville, Kentucky, and extradited to California, where he had to face narcotics charges, after which authorities used DNA testing to establish that he was involved in the murder of Carol Elford, killed July 13, 1987, Guadalupe Duarte Apadoca, killed on September 3, 1987, and Audrey Nelson Everett, killed on August 14, 1989. All three women were killed and later found on the streets of Los Angeles. He was extradited to L.A., where he was charged on January 7, 2013. A few months later, though, the police said that Little was being investigated for involvement in dozens of murders committed in the 1980s, which until then had been undisclosed. In connection with the new circumstances in Mississippi, the La Prairie murder case was reopened. In total, Little was tested for involvement in 93 murders of women committed in 19 states across America. So in September of 2014, he goes on trial for the murders of the Elford Nelson and Apodoca, the women in Los Angeles. The prosecution presented the DNA test results as well as the testimony of witnesses who were attacked by the accused at different times throughout his criminal career. On September 25th, 2014, Little was found guilty and was sentenced to four life terms without the possibility of parole. But on November 9th, 2018, that's when Sam started confessing to other crimes and other murders. And to be quite honest, I really don't want to go through every single confession in detail. For one, that is a lot of confessions to go through and it would just, for a radio show, I don't think, I think it would just bore you. And for two, you can look it up. It's not that hard to find. It's pretty easy, actually. And for three, I'm just kind of, at times, I think it's, bad luck, bad juju. I'm just uncomfortable with mentioning people that have been killed, their names. Just sometimes, I don't know, I get uneasy with it. So there's just too many to go through. But I will say that on November 27th, 2018, same month, same year when he started confessing, the Federal Bureau of Investigation announced that a violent crime apprehension program team had confirmed 34 of Little's confessions and was working to match the remainder. Now, between November 9th and November 27th, they matched and confirmed 34 confessions. How crazy is that? Now, up to date, it says that they verified 50 as of up to date to date. You know what I mean? So, between November 27th, 2018, and now, they have confirmed, what, like 16 more? So, we're sitting at 50 verified murders, and he confessed to 93. Now, like I said, there's a lot of victims, there's a lot of timelines, a lot of places, 
and I'm not going to get into them all. But being as where I'm at where I am, I am going to get into one just because it's really close to home. But investigators initially dismissed 34-year-old Martha Cunningham's death as natural when her body was found in a wooded area off Oglesby Lane in East Knox County on January 18, 1975. She was last seen alive New Year's Eve, 1974. The FBI notes that many of the homicides now tied to Little originally were ruled as drug overdoses or deaths attributed to accidental or unknown causes. Again, Sam has confessed to 93 murders committed between 1970 and 2005. FBI crime analysts, along with state and local authorities across the country, are continuing their work to match his confessions to unsolved homicides. Many of those bodies have yet to be found. Authorities, however, believe that all Little's claims are credible. Now, they didn't match this one in Knoxville until October 8th, 2019. Yeah. So, I mean, they keep finding them left and right, I guess. Or as the years pass by, I should say. Notably, though, Little remembered her first name, Martha, and he described her fairly accurately as a short, light-skinned black woman who wore glasses. Little also said Martha suffered from seizures. The medical examiner's report and Cunningham's sister confirmed she was epileptic and took medication to help control her seizures. Now, how crazy is that? This guy's been all over the country, killed around, well, 50 verified, 93 confessed, and he knows the streets, the bar names, everything about, like, that is a crazy memory. In a confession to authorities in Texas, where Little remains jailed, he said he remembered driving her outside of town and strangling her in his car. Cunningham's body was discovered by a pair of hunters on January 18, 1975, in a wooded area off Oglesby Road in East Knox County. Little spent about three months in Knoxville and left shortly after the slaying. He was never arrested during that time. But Sam also confessed to killing another Knoxville woman six to eight weeks before Cunningham. He described her as being a chubby black woman in her late 20s to early 30s, approximately 5 feet 6 inches tall and 120 to 130 pounds. She was working as a prostitute, he said. Based on Sam's recollections, David Davenport, who is a retired Knox County Sheriff's Office cold case investigator, believes that Little picked up the woman in the vicinity of Magnolia Avenue, possibly near the former Circle Inn Tavern. Little said he strangled her and dropped her body a few blocks away in an overgrown gully. As with many of Little's confessions, though, Knox County authorities are still trying to match this account to any reported death. And there you have it, folks. That is the story of Samuel Little, the United States of America's most prolific serial killer. More damage done than Gacy, Dahmer, and Bundy combined. So there you have it. I didn't know. I didn't really. I knew of him, but I didn't really know that much about him. And now that I knew all, know all this, it's it's kind of unbelievable that I didn't know it before. But there you go. There's a story, everybody. Thanks for stepping in. Thanks for stopping by, checking out the episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sorry you had to deal with my little bit of nasaliness I have going on. Super allergy season down here, so it's a little rough. But I wanted to get you guys the info. I wanted to get the story out. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay spooky, my friends. And be blessed. Yeah.